Hey, I'm Ray Allegrizza with IFRA and editor at large with Home News Now, and I want to welcome you to the latest edition of The Last Word. If this is your first time, welcome. The premise is simple. We talk to our industry thought leaders about critical issues, and we also want to give you an opportunity to get to know them a little better. And today, I'm very proud to have with us Andy Counts, CEO of the American Home Furnishings Alliance and a true pillar of the industry and being the Segway King, speaking of pillar of the industry, we are thrilled that on Friday, October 25th at our annual gala, we are gonna present Andy with the pillar of the industry award, well-deserved. So Andy, welcome and thank you for taking time to be with me this morning. Good morning, Ray, thanks for having me and I'm humbled, humbled and honored to be recognized as a pillar of industry it's not, it's not it's not a good sign for the industry when you're when you're honoring me but that's uh, I appreciate it nobody better so listen everybody knows you so I'm going to take a little different approach tell us a little bit about what you were doing and and where you were before you came to the to the home furnishing industry well obviously m most of my professional career I've been here with the with the association but um I, I went to Georgia Tech and got a degree in uh, industrial engineering. Went to work out of college um, for Marillat Cabinets, um, large cabinet company. It was owned by Masco at the time. And I was a plant engineer in one of their Virginia uh, door plants, world's largest door plant. And uh, they were opening a new plant nearby. So I was responsible for doing all the environmental permitting, the air permits, things of that nature. And I, I got really interested in that, that, uh, that process. And there was an opportunity to become a, um, a regulator for the state of Virginia out in, and move to Virginia Beach. And um, I went to work for the state of the state of Virginia Department of Environmental Quality, worked a lot at the naval bases, et cetera, doing air permits, um, got hired by a consulting firm to do the same thing. And um, was tasked with reaching out to the woodworking industry since I had background in that and uh, helping them with the Clean Air Act of 1990. So I did a lot of uh, consulting work for the furniture industry and opened a Charlotte office to focus on furniture. And one of my clients was the American Furniture Manufacturers Association. So they approached me about becoming their um, director of environmental affairs. So back in 98, I, I jumped on board with the AFMA at the time and uh, the rest is history. And it's been a good history. So, you know, with all that background you had with the engineering and regulatory issues, when you came mainstream here to our sector, two-part question. A, what did you see as your biggest opportunities or the industry's big op biggest opportunities? And then B, some of the challenges. Well, in 98, obviously, we still had a huge d domestic footprint, um, a lot of uh, antiquated woodworking plants that, that were built 100 years ago and people trying to fit the, the a square peg in the round hole. Mm -hmm. So there were a lot of challenges there trying to make those efficient and, and, and productive. Um, and I, I imagine a lot of that led to people making the business decision to, to do the import model instead of the domestic model versus making all the changes that would be needed to be to be competitive here in the United States. But um, certainly a lot, a lot of opportunities for the industry back then to, to, to make changes and, and, and make decisions based on which business model they thought was the best. Now, I don't want you to be arrogant because you're not, but I want you to be confident. You and the HFA have done so much for this industry in terms of keeping us between the lines. I mean, there's so many areas. There's compliance and flammability, tip over. Could you talk to us a little bit about some of the major initiatives that HFA and you and the team have really brought to the industry? Well, obviously there's always something going on. There's, there's agencies in DC that employ hundreds of thousands of people and that they, they exist for no other reason than to create regulations and to justify their jobs. So there's always something being developed that's gonna impact your ability to do business here in the United States. So uh, we're certainly proud of the fact that um, 
us working with other trade associations and other stakeholders, we've been able to get uh, two industry specific pieces of regulation passed in the last few years with the SOFA Act, which uh, mandated uh, the California standard for plantability, and then the, the Sturdy Act more recently that uh, mandated the ASTM standard for, for tip over. Uh, certainly unprecedented for for an industry and small trade association like ourselves to uh, to accomplish something like that. But we obviously it took took a village, took took working with IFRA and HFA and uh, consumer groups to accomplish that. But that's that's all part of the process. And you're kind of like the city that never sleeps. You you and your group over there. Can you talk a little bit about some of the ongoing things you've got uh, um, planned? I know. I'm fortunate in August, I believe it's the 7th and 8th, I'm going to get to attend the compliance summit. Can you talk a little bit about that and maybe a little bit about the CEO summit you got planned? Tell us what's yeah. up. Well, there's, you'll find in the regulatory summit, if you go on our website, look at the agenda, there's still plenty of things that we're wrestling with. Um, CPSC is looking at an e-filing requirement for, for imports. So if you're bringing in um, uh, clothing storage units, you have to file those electronically. With the CPSC, so they'll know what's coming into the ports. Um, state of Utah is looking at different tagging laws that we're we're working with uh, lobbyists in Utah to get that get those uh, worked out. Uh, formaldehyde has always been a hot topic. EPA is trying to eliminate formaldehyde from products altogether. So we've spent a, a ton of resources and time commenting on on their risk assessment, and we'll update everyone on that. Um, CEO conference. Obviously, we're working on that agenda right now in November. We'll be in uh, wine country in uh, California. So I encourage uh, everyone to attend that and check our website for, for details. Now, this may be kind of an unfair question. It's like asking, you know, somebody that's got multiple kids, which is his favorite child. But of, of all, the, all the major inroads you've made, are, are there a couple that, that you feel particularly proud of in terms of really having made the industry better? That is a tough question, but I think uh, looking back on it, um, probably our biggest accomplishment was our transition uh, back in 2004 from the uh, American Furniture Manufacturers Association to the American Home Furniture Alliance, where we uh, embraced the fact that the industry is global in nature uh, but we have a lot more in common than we do different if we focused on all the issues that we have to, to deal with in the United States to do business successfully, be it an importer or a domestic manufacturer. Um, there's plenty of things we could do to work together. So the ability to pull the industry together, pull the membership together and make that transition wasn't easy. But um, I think it was the best move for everyone involved and um I think looking back on it, that was, that was our biggest success. Terrific. I agree. You know, from your perspective, we, we've got an issue right now where the business is challenged. The economy is a little sluggish. Inflation is up. There's still some inventory issues. What are some of the things or, or maybe what's one thing the industry could do as a whole to be more successful right now? That's a tough question. It's a huge challenge out there. Um, you know, we got out of the forecasting business um, several years ago because the, the crystal ball was always hazy and um, people would call us and go, That's, don't say that, we're not going to do that. But, uh, you know, we had uh, Mark Vittner recently, a, a, a well-recognized economist, speak at our transportation logistics conference. And there's a lot of uh, a lot of hurdles out there. We're concerned about the global global uh, wars that are going on, the potential impact of, of uh, Israel and Hezbollah, et cetera. Um, but you look in the future, there's a huge pent up demand for housing. Uh, there's a obviously a misconception that 7%, 6% interest rates are, are not historically good. Uh, you know, my dad paid 21% mortgage for his home. Uh, so as soon as people realize that the, the 3 and 4% mortgages aren't coming back, um, I think there's going to be a huge housing move. And that's going to benefit our industry. Hopefully, that happens sooner than later. But um, everybody I've talked to feels it's going to happen uh, certainly within the next few quarters. 
All right. And, you know, I agree the crystal ball. Mine is just as hazy as yours. But since I'm asking the questions, shake yours a little bit or wipe it off, put some Windex on it. What 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 would you think the outlook might be for between now and the end of the year and then maybe peeking around the corner a little bit into next year? Best guess. I think we'll see a uh, the feds drop interest rates um, towards the end of the year, which is going to trigger a lot of people to get into the housing market. Uh, as soon as they see the mortgage rates go down just a little bit, um, they're going to make their moves. And that's going to be a huge boom for the industry. So I'm thinking fourth quarter, um, things will start turning around and then uh, we'll continue to rise into 25. I love it. I love it. All right. The name of this little Zoom cast is The Last Word. So with that in mind, for once, I'm going to zip my lip. You get the last word. Anything you want to say to the uh, industry at large? Well, as we've discussed here today, things are a little a little challenging. Um, of course, we've been through it before. We've had recessions. Um, we've had we've had challenges. We've had pandemics that that we've gotten through and benefited from. Uh, the important thing is to support each other. Uh, there are goods providers out there that focus on the furniture industry. They, their livelihoods and everything are focused on providing services to our industry and supporting our industry. So it's best that we continue to support them versus finding um, something that might be a little cheaper from, from a different provider. Um, let's continue to support those companies that, that are focused on our industry and will be, be your partners going forward. I love it. Andy, thank you for taking time. As always, cool, calm, collected, cogent, and intelligent. I appreciate it, and we really appreciate everything that you and the HFA does for us. Hope to see you soon. For sure, we'll see you in October. Thanks, Ray. All right. Have a great day. Thank you.